Hey everyone, I'm building an entire first person shooter game from scratch in the Gato engine and documenting the progress with these tutorials. In this video, we're adding a simple bullet hole decal to our Raycast shooting mechanic. The basic FPS controller project from episode one is available for free on GitHub. And if you would like to download all of the source files, you can get access by joining my Patreon. Let's dive in. All right, welcome back to another tutorial for the FPS project today. We're gonna take that Raycast that we did in the last episode and we're gonna swap out our truly ugly sphere looking mesh thing we did for our test. And we're gonna add a bullet decal. It's actually gonna be pretty quick today not too complicated to actually do this given our setup. Now, if you're coming from your own setup and it's fresh, what we're basically gonna be doing is taking a Raycast and spawning a scene that has a decal. The main difficulty with this is figuring out what the normal is of the surface that we've hit and rotating our decal so it looks not like trash. Again, if you wanna be working from the same project that I'm working on, you can get that on my Patreon. Otherwise, let's let's jump in. Let's do this. Now, our current decal setup is just a uh, basic mesh instance 3D. We're going to be swapping this first with a decal. So let's add a decal node. Now, what the, the decal node does is it projects a 2D image onto our 3D surfaces. And that's exactly what we need for our bullet hole. Now, the other cool thing that you can do with the decal node in Gato 4 is you can not only add the albedo texture, but you can add a normal texture or emission or roughness or metallic. So you can actually do a pretty cool look with just a decal. But today we're just going to do a albedo because that's what I've got for our free resource for our bullet hole. So now we've added our decal node. Let's go ahead and set this to our scene root. So now our Raycast test scene is really a decal scene. And let's uh, let's just delete our ugly sphere because we don't need that. All right, we've got our decal. Let's grab our bullet hole image. So this is the bullet hole image that we're going to use. And this is coming from opengameart.org. This is a open source image. You can use this in your own project without any issue, public domain. And we're going to download this and we're going to pop it into our project. Now, if you've downloaded your bullet hole decal or if you're using your own decal, we're going to add this to our projects and let's add it to our, our textures folder. Again, when you're importing stuff into Gato, you can just grab that file, click, drag, pop it in. It's going to import exactly where you selected in the file system. And there's our bullet hole. So let's add that to our decal node. We'll drop that into our albedo. Now we can't see anything yet. In fact, let's uh, let's add a mesh just to, to see how this works a little bit. All right, now our box, is, our box is actually fine. Our decal is way too big. So let's adjust this. We've got a couple settings in the decal node, the first being a, a size setting. Now we want to set this um, probably to like 0.1 meter. Let's do a tenth of a meter. And even though this is a, a 2D texture, you'll notice that we're setting it in three dimensions. Whoop, we gotta, we gotta adjust this. So I'm moving the parent, so it's moving the child. We can actually um, unattach this if we do transform top level on our mesh instance 3D node, and that's gonna keep it independent of our, our parent node. Little trick there for you. All right, so we've got our, our three-dimensional cube of a decal and it's projecting that decal along this Y axis right here. So if we move it up, we actually have a little bit of a fade effect that we can utilize. Now, if I turn this, you're gonna notice, whoop, there we go. You're gonna notice that it distorts a little bit. That's because if I turn it 90 degrees, it's now projecting along this axis globally. So let's set this back on our rotation. We're going to visit that rotation aspect a little bit later. And let's set this back to our center, get rid of our mesh instance 3D node because we don't need it. And we've got our decal ready to go. Now we can actually test this because we've already set up our testing recast function, which is now going to be our, our bullet hole function. And we're spawning that instance whenever we shoot a surface. So let's see what the, uh, the decal does now that we've put that in there. 
So we fire on a surface and our decal is already showing up. Now we have a problem that we need to adjust because it's not that simple. Let's head down here and actually shoot on the side. And notice how we have our, our projection issue that we talked about. It's projecting up and down. And so we're getting this sort of side cut of our image. And that's not what we want. What we want is the decal to actually rotate depending upon the surface normal of our raycast. So we're here in our, our weapon script and here's our test raycast function. I'm gonna actually zoom this up a little bit so it's a little bit easier to see. There we go. So whenever we, we shoot the gun, whenever we attack, we are doing a raycast onto the surface, getting that result, and then currently we're just getting the position so we can spawn our, our test scene at that position. And we're doing that by running our test raycast function. And we talked about this in the last video, but I'll, I'll go over it real quick for this one. We create a, an instance of that scene and we add that to the, the root of our level as a child. And then we set that global position of that instance to the position of our raycast hit. And then we're just uh, doing a timer of three seconds and, and destroying it. So what we need to do is not only set the position, but also adjust the rotation so that it aligns with the normal of our raycast, depending on what surface we hit. And we can do that by just adding a little bit more to this function. So after we set the global position, what we want to do is get our instance and use what is called the look at function. Now, what this function does is it takes a position and automatically rotates the scene or whatever you're adjusting to that position so that it's looking at it. And the first thing that we need to get is the global position for it to look at. And we can get that by getting our instance global transform and getting its origin. Okay, that's gonna get the very center of our scene, of our instance. So that gives us our position. And then the second parameter for this is we need to add a vector three up. This lets the script know what our orientation is for our scene. Now this alone is not gonna do it. We also need to use the normal of the surface that we hit. So we need to actually get that from our result. So what we're gonna do is go back to our test raycast function, which in fact, let's go ahead and rename this to bullet hole and we'll adjust where we call it to bullet hole. We need to add another parameter to this and it's gonna be normal and that's gonna be a vector three. Now, when we call the bullet hole function, we're already asking to get the position from our result. We need to do the same thing, only we're gonna ask for the normal of our result. Now, what this is gonna do, again, is get the normal, the direction of the surface, wherever we hit with our raycast, which is exactly what we want. Now that we are passing that normal value, we can take that and add it to the position that we wanna look at. Let me, uh, let me draw this out so it's a little bit easier to understand. Um, let's, grab, let's grab some paint. So imagine you have a straight up and down wall right here, and we're gonna fire our gun in this direction, and it's gonna hit right at that point. That is the global position, the point of impact that we're already using. And now we're also gonna get the normal, that is the direction that that surface is pointing to in our results. Now that normal, is pointing this way. And that result is gonna be a vector three. Usually if it's going left or right, might be one, zero, zero. If it's pointing up, it's gonna be zero, one, zero. And we're gonna add that normal to that global position right there. And what that's gonna do is give you a little point, just a little bit in front, depending on where that surface is pointing. So when we spawn and rotate that decal, right there, it's gonna to point towards that little green dot. So we've set in our look at function, 
to look at the global transform origin plus that normal. Well, let's go ahead and run that same test. All right, up is working, but up was already working. Let's test the side. Well, we're still having the same issue, but if you go back and you'll notice our image does look a little bit different. Now we have to do one more check when we are doing our rotation orientation. Now, because of the way that the decal is set up, it's, it's more of an up and down than it is to a left and right. Remember that it's projecting at a default up and down. So let's see what happens when we take our instance and we rotate it locally by 90 degrees on the X axis. And you can do that by rotate object local. The first parameter is what axis you wanna rotate on, and we're gonna do it on the X axis. And then you gotta tell the amount, the degrees. So let's, uh, let's add that. It's unhappy with me. Oh, because I, I misspelled instance. There we go. Let's test it now. There we go. So now that we've adjusted for the, the decal's weird orientation, we've got a, a working sideways bullet decal, but it's a little funky if we're doing our up and down. So what we can do, instead of rotating every single instance, we can check if the normal of the impact point equals up or down. And if it equals up or down, we don't want to rotate it. There's no need to do that. So we're going to do an if normal does not equal vector three, and we'll get our up vector. And you can do that with, um, actually you can do a shorthand for that. Just do up and normal does not equal vector three down meaning if it's not straight up or straight down, then we'll rotate. All right, now let's check. All right, check our up. That's working like it should. Check our side. That's working like it should. And there's a couple of other spots, although it's mainly a left, right, down setup. So let's actually, let's, let's add a sphere. Let's let's switch this over here. Select this box and let's switch it to a sphere. Now a sphere is gonna have a ton of different surface normals. It's gonna go in every single direction. So it'll be a good test for our, our new script. And we'll add a tri-mesh static body. So we have our collision. You can see the collision with our, our blue wireframe. And let's let's test that out. So what should happen is as we shoot this sphere, that decal is gonna go in every single surface normal that we have without an issue. And that's looking pretty good. So we're gonna add one more uh, effect to this because it's, it's currently just getting rid of it after three seconds and it's a little, it's kind of ugly. So let's have, it, uh, let's have it fade. So let's go back to our script and Let's go down here. Currently we are, are waiting three seconds and then we're just, we're killing it. We're getting rid of it. Well, let's, um, let's do an await for, for two seconds. Well, not 32, two seconds. And then after that, let's create a tween. Um, I don't think I've done this in a tutorial yet. So this is how you do a tween. Uh, a tween is just a kind of a basic animation that you can add and it's, it's not so permanent as being in a, an animation player, and you can just do it in code. So you create a, a variable, we'll call this variable fade, and you get our scene tree, and then we're gonna create tween. Okay, so that creates the, uh, the tween, and we've got two equals. We don't need to do that. And then we get our, our new tween, and we set our tween property, all right? Now we're gonna get the object that we want to tween. In this case, it's our instance that we've set. 
and then you can select the property of that instance that you want to adjust. Now we're doing a, a fade. So each, uh, each node 3D is gonna have a, a modulate property and that allows you to adjust the color. It also allows you to adjust the alpha. So let's get our modulate and then get the alpha value for our modulate property. And the final value of that should be a big old zero. And then you can set the duration of that tween. Let's do 1.5 seconds. And then let's do another timer. And we'll just uh, await, mm, let's say 1.5 seconds. And then we'll time out. And then after that, we'll, we'll kill the, the instance. So instead of just getting rid of it after three seconds, we're gonna wait two seconds. We're gonna create a tween that's going to animate the alpha of that scene to zero in 1.5 seconds. And after that 1.5 seconds, then we'll free that, that scene. Okay, so we've got that all set up. So let's test our scene one more time and we should get a uh, fading out decal whenever we shoot. There we go. Now, obviously you can adjust that time. You could set it up so that you only have so many decals that can spawn. And when you run over that, you get rid of the oldest one. But then it gives you a, a basic decal, something to build off of that will orient depending on the surface that you shoot. All right, guys, if this tutorial was helpful, consider it a like and subscribe to the channel as we're going to be covering a lot more. Thanks to all of my patrons who keep this series going. You too can get access to the project source files by joining my Patreon. You can download everything there and you'll also get early access to my videos and sneak peeks at future tutorials. Thanks for watching and as always, keep creating.